The views of the guest are that of the guests and do not represent nor reflect the views and opinions of the Lockout Men channel, the recruiter call channel, nor its host. This site content is for entertainment, educational, and informational purposes only. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, man. And, and, and you know what, man? I think it's great what you're doing. And, uh, you know, I love this show. I watch it. You know, I sit back sometimes and, you know, I laugh. But then sometimes I'm like, oh, man. But, um, yeah, man, I definitely will uh, get back at you. I'm, I'm going to give it a little. I'm going to give it the three months that they say, you know, after three months. And then I'm going to get back at you. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Hello? Hey, hello. How's it going, bro? Hey, what's going on, my guy? Hey, ain't much, man. You know, just out here trucking. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. We about to, about to get into it, man. We about to get into it. You uh, super ego trucking. Yes, sir. Mm. Need, yes, need, sir. Need, need to know I a little. The challenge. Need, need to know a little bit more about that, my guy. Well, I mean, what you want to know? Like, well, let's go uh, in and uh, get into it. All right. Welcome to the show, Charles. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate you uh, coming on, man, and uh, chopping it up with me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you reached out. You you must have seen one of the controversial company Super Eagles uh, 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 driver confession videos on the channel, and uh, you was like, uh, you 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 looked at it and you wanted to come on and and share your experience. Now you being a rookie, you you only got a couple of what a, a year, less than a year. What, what what's going on? What's your story, man? Bring bring it in. All bring right, it all right. Well, listen, you know, I got I got my CDL license. I went to uh, CDL school. So I've had my license for about a year, but it took about seven months for me to even get a job. So um, I started with Western Express, um, and, and everybody knows, you know, how they are. So um, that, that was my first experience. Um, and then I worked with them for four months. Uh, I wasn't going well over there. Uh, you know, I was sitting around a lot. So um, I was like, man, I need something different. I met an owner-operator at a at a truck stop, and he offered me a, a position. So I left Weston, went and worked with him. So um, I worked with him for about two months, uh, and, you know, he just wasn't moving his money around right. So, you know, the situation was a little hectic. So um, I was learning as I was with the owner-operator. Um, so I kind of understood what it was to be an owner-operator because, you know, I was dealing with a lot of situations um, that most new people that come into the game don't deal with. So um, when I seen the Super Eagle ad, you know, I sold that out ASAP, you know, and, and I went in with Super Eagle understanding, you know, the risk and, and all the issues that came with it. But I know that owner-operators... So you started off deep into the game. You couldn't get a legitimate job because of your experience. You, you went to CDL school out of pocket? Oh, okay. CDL school, um, I actually got funded. Uh, through the government, a program called Career Link in Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, you know they was offering extended education for uh for felons. Um, you know, so you know I got out of jail. A friend of mine, you know, um, you know he went to this program OVR, and he was saying he got a CDL. So I went to Career Link. I signed up. You know they approved me for the grant, and they paid for my CDL. Okay. Okay. So you All know right. I took I took I took full advantage of it. All right. So so coming out of jail, changing your life, you figured getting your CDL, getting in the truck, and it would be a good thing. Was your felony background was, was like, was like your hold up when you was looking for trucking jobs coming in? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I know that's, that's not the, what they told me. Uh, it was more or less experience. Uh, most companies wanted at least three months, six months, you know, to a year to two years experience. So there's not a lot of companies out there that are going to, you know, hire you if you, you're right out of school. It's, it's funny that a lot of companies has changed, like literally changed. Like when I, I came in out of school, there was companies that was coming to the schools. We, we had Snyder, Warner, US Express, at the time, Yellow, Conway, all of them. But, and this is back in 2015, where companies was hungry for drivers and they was just throwing out all kinds of numbers to get us in there, 5,000, 2,000, sign on bonus, everything. But it seems as though now you guys coming out of school, it's it's like damn near hard to get in with a company now. The same companies that gave us veterans, 2015ers, a chance with no question are the same companies now like, yeah, yeah, you're going to need about three months, six months to, to rock out with us. But those are the same companies that, that offered us the chance that didn't even have none at all. 
And I, I, I guess it's, I guess because of all of the companies that shut it down, all the companies that went bankrupt, all the companies that just went completely complete, and now they got experienced drivers that they can that they can cherry pick from, and they can literally say. Yeah, you came out of school and everything. That's good, but we we got a handful of experienced drivers. We'd rather give them the chance now because we're not hungry anymore. So yeah, of course, companies like Western Express is probably is going to be your alternative. So you went with them and you try to make it work, but unfortunately, it didn't work for you. Now your experience is different with everybody else's experience. What was your experience total? with western express uh western express uh well you know first um you know things things were great um uh so you know they gave me my truck and i took a load immediately uh <laughs> my first week i did get pulled over at in uh dot inspection and i had a flat tire uh it was the inside drive tire and it must have happened on the way because i just did a uh a pre-trip inspection before i left and you know they got me for that um apparently uh i had a, a fine or something in new york and uh new york state and i wasn't my privilege to drive through that state where i'm suspended so um okay. yeah western express then they didn't tell me anything like that they asked me about my license uh one of the recruiters asked me something and then they changed their mind uh by asking the question so uh they just hired me i mean i guess that's what, what they saw on there but they just was like hey we're, we're just gonna hire him anyway um so they towed the truck and 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 the trailer, and I was on a I was on a load, you know. Um, and, you know, I had to wait a day to pay that fine, and you know, I was back on the road. Uh, it was just, you know, you get four loads, you get paid eight hundred bucks. You know, you get five loads or six loads, you get a thousand dollars. But if you don't do that, they pay you by the mile. So you know, if you were if you if you wasn't getting no loads, you wasn't getting paid. You know, so my last check with them was one hundred sixty three bucks, and they left me sitting up in New York State for a whole week. They even asked me, yo, you want to go home? I said, yes, I want to go home. My my dispatch went home, so I called them, and they was like, well, you know, uh, you have to, uh, all the dispatchers went home, so, you know, you'll have to wait till somebody calls you. I, I waited the whole weekend. Wow. Um, so they would leave you sitting out there. Um, so that's my experience with a, with a, with a company, okay. as a company driver. All right, Western Express. Okay, so you decided yeah. to, to get with an with a owner. How did you link up with him, and how did your experience go with him? Okay, well, I was at a pilot, um, and you know, I was out there. I was cleaning my, I was cleaning my windows. You know, I'm getting fuel, and he came over, started talking to me. He's like, "Yo, how long you been driving with them?" And uh, I told him, and he was like, "Look, man, um, if you don't want to work for them no more, here's my number. Hit me up." So you know, after them four months, it was it was like a month after I met him, and I quit Western Express because I was tired of everything. And um, I hit him up. Now, as an owner operator, he's like, "Hey, I'm gonna have you drive the truck you see me in, but I'm trying to get this this truck out of the shop." So I was like, "That was a red flag that I should have seen." But you know, I was green, so I said, "All right, cool." I waited a week. He got me in the truck, started running with him. Um, from the door, I started seeing, you know, some some shady things going on. He did pay me. He paid me 25% of load, and, and that was good. You know, he paid me after every load. Um, the plan was for me to start an LLC, and he paid me weekly to my LLC and helped me get a truck, and then eventually I could run under his MC. But, you know, he just didn't have all his, his ducks in a row, and, you know, problems would happen. A headlight would go out. I'd be driving for two weeks before he fixed it. Um, he didn't have ifto on his truck. Uh, for two weeks, at one point, we was driving without insurance. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he was telling me that things were okay, but they really wasn't. Because when I would get pulled over, they'd be like, man, how long you know this guy? <laughs> you know, and uh, they would jokingly say it to me. And, um, you know, I expressed a lot of things to him, like, yo, you know, what is, you know, IFTA and this and that, and these things that you need, these permits that you need, you don't got in here. And he would just always lie to me and stuff. So um, I was learning basically by experience uh the rules of actually you know being an operator and the things that you need to operate a truck um you know the truck didn't have no heat in it so I, and you know, i was waiting for weeks for him to, to fix the uh compressor uh and he never did that so um you know i was it was a rough time you know i was going through trials and tribulations with it but i wanted to stick with it because you know my goal was to get my llc now that i had it, a reputation 
you know, uh, show the banks that I was making money uh, to get a truck. But um, every week it was just something was going on, something was wrong. He would even ask me for gas money and to, to get the load to the drop. You know what I mean? And say, hey, you know, you can put the gas in. Uh, I'll just pay it back to you when you drop off the load. So there was just a lot of stuff that was going on. And I, I felt at that time like, shit, you know, I might as well do this on my own. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm talking to dispatchers. You know, I'm picking out loads and telling him, you know what I'm saying? Hey, look, let's get this load and that load. You know, so... He was teaching me as we was going along, and I was just soaking all of that in because my goal was to be an owner-operator because I still feel, even though the game is a little messed up and the rates are low, that, you know, I can find some type of success out of this because I've never seen $6,000 a week. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I was just like, man, I, this is something that I want to do, and I, and I can do. Okay. So you just took all of that soaked it up like a sponge i commend you for that because i i, I tell everybody when you out there training when you out there learning because the learning don't stop soak up everything it's always better to be that fly on the wall than being the loudest person in the room you know what i'm saying so so you took that and now you're with controversial company super eagle you're you're a rookie with the company of course you haven't been there long and and people people get on me for talking to people that only been there for like a month two months a week or whatever the case but but here you are it sounds as though you coming with a success story bro like you coming with a success story so far because i i would be the one to be like yeah everything's good in the beginning as it always is but but get back at me at about a couple of months, six months, and 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 then let me know how it went. But <laughs> but yeah. But you you said that you could see some on the background when we had our conversation. You, you could see some upsides to the opportunity. And as I said before about controversial company Super Eagle, sometimes it's the they they might be your only refuge in the trucking. Hey, I'm 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 just saying. Again, I would say it. I would always say it, and I will always say it to the people that I talk to. Super Eagle isn't for me. I don't have a problem with Super Eagle per se. It's not like I don't like them or I do like them. I just know it's not. I know it's not the company for me because of all the research that I did, all the videos I seen, all of the articles, all of the reviews I seen. I I just know it wasn't for me. But I'm gonna ask you: Did you do all of your reviews, your your research, and and everything? And if so. You still chose to give Super Ego a chance. Now, everybody experience, it's not going to be your experience. You really just got to get in there and really see for yourself how it's going to work. So how was it that you was able to connect with, with Super Ego? And did you do all of your research and everything? And why did you, despite everything you heard and read and seen, give suit controversial company super ego a chance okay um well uh yeah i did do my research uh i watched video after video i mean i watched videos all the way up until i landed in chicago um and it to me is like a you know what i mean a coin toss you know it, it was 50 50 uh and but i think what really uh, made the decision easy for me was, you know, my mentality going into it. Um, I already worked with an owner operator and I worked with a company. Those were my, you know, two experiences. So I haven't worked with every company, so I don't know how things go with every company. But, you know, I pretty much seen the owner operator side of it. I know what the ups and downs was. And, you know, even the videos I were watching, you know, I seen some of the people and, um, I just listened to like, you know what I mean? I looked deeper into the way they were speaking and uh, it felt like everybody was just leaving some things out. You know what I mean? Um, it's just, you could tell like a person, you could tell like a person that's not willing to actually uh, go above and beyond uh, to, to make something happen. To, uh, you know what I mean? To be successful. And you can hear it in their voices. So it was hard for me to really believe some of the people that were um, talking down about them. Um, but some of the stuff they were saying, I expect it. You know, we, we, we live in a world where, you know, pretty much everything is, is a scam and it's not fair. You know what I mean? A lot of people are struggling all over the place. But, um, and then I listen to people that were actually being successful and they tell you, hey, after three months, you know, you're going to start seeing some commas. You know what I mean? And then I started weighing, hey, it's a lease purchase. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you actually own the vehicle after it's completed. Um, so, you know, me seeing the owner operator, 
struggle to pay his insurance and, and to pay his, his truck note and then all of the maintenance things and the problem, I can understand the money that comes out from, from, from all the money you make a week. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go give it a shot. You know, um, I said, you know, what's the worst that to happen? You know, I, I, my whole experience with this has not really been a good one. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm six. Well, we're seven to eight months in to being a trucker. You know, I haven't even been a, a full year out here on the road. So, hey, why don't I go in there and get this experience? Um, one thing that really did motivate me is that I know that banks look at money coming in. Uh, and I know that, that uh, banks seeing you make $6,000, you know, uh, they don't really care about the money going out. But if they see those statements that, yay, yeah, this guy, you know, he worked hard and he generated 6000 this week, 8000 this week, you know, um, they're they're more they're easier to help you get a loan so that you could get your own truck. So you know what I mean. I came in here with that. I didn't think about the money. I thought about the paperwork. You know what I mean. Uh, giving giving some my company or my LLC a little bit of credibility so I could use that to my advantage with these banks. Um, I haven't had a problem since I started my first week. Uh, as soon as I got my truck, they gave me a load. Everybody told me don't take the load because that's only one load, and you know they pay you for the pickup, so don't do it because they're going to charge you double. They're going to charge you for the whole week. They didn't do that, you know. For that one load, they took out for those two days what they their fixed cost, and I wasn't in the negative. You know, I only made it was like 163 bucks out of the the whole thing, but out of the 1400. But I was I know that I was one payment away from my truck. You know what I'm saying? Uh. I was one payment in on my insurance. So then when my next check came, I made about a thousand dollars after they, they took everything out. I made sixty one hundred sixty one ninety, basically sixty two hundred. They took everything that they needed to take out, my fixed cost, the fuel that I use, um, and their twenty five percent. In reality, they had one time payments that they take out. Those one time payments are just for that month. So now the rest of the paychecks that I make for the rest of this month, you know, I'm gonna see a a, a higher bring home number. Um and my number was 1800 and I was going to bring 1800 that week, but they took the one time. So now next week, you know, I, I made just about the same. I made a little bit more this week, my second week. So I'm, I'm probably going to see about 1500 after my calculations and, you know, the gas that I use and the fuel that I use, I'll be making 1500 bucks. Um, that is probably around the most that I've made since my experience but i'm also buying the truck as well so i just try to look at the at, at the, the positive uh, uh things that come from a bad situation you know a lot of people come in here and they look at the money you can't do that any successful uh, billionaire out there if you do your research on on businessmen that have been successful they will tell you well Yo, when you are starting a business and you want to be an entrepreneur don't make the money your focus i i see what you're saying I get you. I'm on board and I understand and I, what you were, what you saying. Don't don't look at the money. Just look at the experience. Just look at what you what you're trying to build and everything. But controversial company Super Eagle makes the money the main factor of of trying to get you guys in. Every social media post that they be posting, they send that come on in here and get three thousand dollars a week. And how could you not mm -hmm. think about the money with the company? But the company is making you thinking about the money because that's what they keep putting out there. Right, right. I, well, I didn't see that on the post. You know, like when I seen when I seen their ad on uh, Facebook and I signed up, I didn't see nothing about uh, the money. They probably did say something. But my mind is so far ahead that, you know, the money wasn't there with me because I knew that when you're dealing with finance companies, they need to see paperwork. You know what I mean? They need to see statements and stuff. So I was like, man, if I can go run for them, I know I can make, you know what I mean, 6000 and make, make these banks look like I'm really generating that much money so they know so they can finance me. So that's what that's what I seen when, when I came in. Um I understand that, you know, people need to, to make money and I don't think that if your person, you know, your family is not stable and you need to count on every dollar, then you shouldn't be trying to start a business. You know what I mean? Because in in a as an owner operator, the stuff that e Super Eagle is taking out, those are the things that owner operators have to deal with every week. Yeah, owner operator get on online and tell you, y'all, I'm making six thousand dollars a week, but he's not telling you everything he has to pay that week. He's not really telling you how much he's taking home, especially now with these rates. And I'm new; I don't know what it was like. But the stories people tell me, you know, what I mean, I can understand their frustration. But see, I'm new, so this I make fifteen or twelve hundred bucks. I'm like, all right, cool, I'm good. I'm I'm making like. You know what I mean? Forty six, forty eight hundred a month. You know what I mean? Being a new person, I'm like, all right, cool. I could deal with that. 
but these, there's a lot of people that have seen the money. So when they see stuff like that and they see Super Eagles taking all of it out, you know, it, it, it's just, you know, it, it, it's hard for them. Okay. okay. But a lot of these a lot of these people are used, you know, some of these people that have been in the game for a long time, they're used to seeing $8,000 a load. You know, I hear the stories. I hear them all the time. People tell me about the glory days. You know what I mean? Like that football player that never made it. Yes. Sir. So you, so, so, so Charles, man, you're, you're good with your, with your fleet manager you got lucky i i should say to to catch a fleet manager that would take care of you get you some monthly get you some loads help you make some money out here you, you good with him um oh uh, yeah man like look listen i i did five loads my first week he made sure that you know what i mean i had loads he called me and said hey look i got these options you know what i'm saying which, which ones you want to work with now i understand yeah that they, they probably saving off you know what I mean? The brokers are giving them a number. They're giving us a different number. You know what I mean? The, the Raycons definitely look like they typing that shit in when they send it to you. But he gives me options on what loads I want to take. Uh, he didn't hit me hard. He ain't giving me a bunch of uh, heavy loads. Uh, but, yeah, I'm I'm pretty cool with it because I've seen how, you know, the owner-operator I work with struggle. So I know what the game is. You know, they're using these MCs that are new because they're just changing them all the time, you know, because of their bad name. I know that they're dealing with the uh, beginner load board. So, but he's, he's constantly like, right now I'm in Colorado. He gave me three loads in advance. I said, listen, I want team loads. You know, he would give me, he would find me some team loads. I said, listen, when you give me my loads, if you send me somewhere, if you send me somewhere, well, you all right? <laughs> <coughs> team loads. Now, I got my own personal opinion on how to run team loads as a solo driver. I'm not speculating or anything like that. They also say that's honestly the only way to make money over there is by quote unquote running team loads. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to put you on the spot, bro, but is that true to your account of how you can make at least the money that you're making by running quote unquote team loads I, I i he has not given me one yet i told him to give them to me but he hasn't given me one you know what i mean because like i said working with the owner operator you know with a, somebody has their own that's what most of these owner operators are doing out here to survive now you know i'm not <laughs> trying to get people in trouble or you know be a, a, a swiller of the game but you know if people don't know all the information of what people are doing out here to survive you know they're not going to understand it, it would be hard for people to understand if you don't give them the full truth you know what i mean and um it, i would hate for somebody to be like that wants to be in in an entrepreneurial position to not understand what you have to do to survive out here you know every trucker is out here complaining you know and and, and people they watch what videos they want to watch i watch all of them not every last one but i i scroll down and i I look at other truckers and, and the complaints that they have about um, the trucking game right now. And everybody is struggling, you know. But if you have opportunity, you don't have no money, you know, you definitely want to come over here to this company and take advantage of it um, the best you can and live, live within your means. I have not gotten a, a team load yet, but I, I've gotten loads consistently. Um, and I see after they get with the money, you know, after you pay off the escrow and things like that, uh, you'll start seeing more money. Once you get your own fuel card, you'll start seeing more money. But Charles, man, what what about your CDL though? You you feel like are you putting your CDL at risk by running the way that they want you to run? And and aren't you afraid that if you was to get pulled over for any reason or get in any situation, do you feel confident that the company will stand behind you if if in anything should happen to you that will That'll put your CDL at risk. Uh, I listen. I I I know for sure they're not. I mean, I I know that they're not. But man, my my drive for success. Uh, if if I could cut some corners to get there uh, as safely as possible, um, you know, I'm taking uh, consideration of other people's lives. So um, I really haven't had to do anything illegal per se. Uh, in here, but man, you know what I want and and the goal I have. Uh. I, I'm definitely willing to take some risks. Um, I just wanted that back. So 
All right, so Charles, man, you, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing everything. I'm enjoying the conversation, and more power to you, man. I more, more power to you. I'm not discouraging you. I'm not going to be like, oh man, you this, that, and the third. I'll just leave that up to the comment session. So <laughs> my thing is, my thing is this, man. I'm here for the stories, whether it's good or bad. I'm here for the stories. I want to share y'all experiences out with everybody else that may have the same thing but here you are showing your experience thus far is good you're not having no problems you're making your money you're doing what you need to do to make things happen with controversial company super eagle and that's good but my question is this and i'm i'm hearing all of this man but and i know you said you came from restaurant i think you said something about cr england but i'm not sure but are you a sap driver bro i'm gonna have to ask that are are, are you a sap driver are you a, are you a hobo you are you, a, you do you have anything bad on your on your on your background that's why you really invest in with controversial company super eagle and if i if you do i understand but i'm i'm just trying to I'm just trying to gauge like why you went over there versus trying to go with any other company but them uh of course, yes, I do. I do. Um, I'm not a staff driver, you know. I, I'm good. My clearinghouse is clean. Uh, but uh, before I got my CDL, um, you know, I've had some uh accidents, you know, in my in my regular vehicle. Uh, 2022 and 2023. Um, I have uh like speeding tickets, you know, right before I got, and it's literally right before, you know, what I mean, within you know, 24, 12 to 24 months, you know, I've. I acquired those, those violations with my regular license. And then I graduated CDL school. I, I wasn't aware that they carry over. So, yeah, I think that uh, those uh, incidents uh, is affecting uh, my ability to work with some companies. And uh, I did I did try to put an application in CR England. You know, I talked to a recruiter and she asked me if I had fines. I said, yeah, I have some fines. Um, and she said, well, you have to pay all of them. You have to pay them off. And I'm like, well, one's 4000 and one's 7000 I don't even have a job. You know what I mean? I'm down. I, I was uh, down for two weeks because the owner-operator's truck broke down. So I was down for two weeks. I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to, you know, make it happen again. So I called them. You know, they had me uh, open up, a, you know, something that, that wasn't really active in my life. But once I called them and I was like, well, all right, cool. I called them and I set up a payment plan. They was like, no, you need to pay it all off to, to get a job. So, um. Yeah, it was, I, I'm pretty sure that those uh, violations, uh, those traffic violations that I had is playing a part to why some companies won't mess with me uh, because of the risk. Uh, like I said, with the owner operator, he had me to his insurance uh, and his insurance went up $2,000, uh, uh, you know, a month. Um, I think his premium went up about $13,000. Uh, and so once I, once I learned that, um, I realized that, hey, you know, uh, you know, this is probably why companies, they're not telling me why, you know, they're not hiring me. They're just not calling me back. Um, so I'm thinking, dang, this, this is why, you know, I'm not getting a company job. So yes, um, you know, some of those turnaways definitely, uh, motivated me to, to come with Super Eagle. Um, because I knew of the people that they, they hired. So I was like, hey, you know, I got a chance. They called me and it was like, yo, send us your credentials over. I sent them my ID, my medical and, uh, you know, they told me I was approved and I could come work with them. I, I didn't waste no time. I was like, man, let me go over here and see if I can make this work. And making it work you are, man. Well, thank you very much, bro. I appreciate you uh, coming on to the show. Yeah. Can I say one more thing? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Now, listen, you know what I mean? Uh, you got to understand when you're dealing you deal with, you know, shady people, you know, because I come from a background of doing that. You know, most of my life I did that. I just want to tell people out there, like, you know, I went in there and a lot of those people were asking for old trucks. I literally went in there and said, hey, yo, I'll go recover some trucks to make the 5000 to get a new truck. I don't know if it was, you know, my attitude or charisma or, you know, my gift of gab. I don't know what it was. And I'm not upping myself up, but... I got a brand new truck out of them with 461 miles on it. And I'm paying $50 more than most of the people using old trucks. So, you know, I, and, and I went in there and I talked to them, you know what I mean, with, with, with authority in my voice. You know, it wasn't no asking this, asking that. Hey, listen, I want a 2000, I want a brand new truck so I can run it up. And, you know, the guy gave me a brand new truck. No money down. You young in the game. You're a rookie. You're still trying to get your experience up. You, you rocking out with controversial company, Super Ego. What would you say to a person that's in your position? Guy come up to you, 
Hey man, you know, I, I'm, I just got out of jail. I got some issues on my background, and no trucking company is is not messing with me. Would you suggest controversial company Super Ego to them? And if so, how would you go by telling them without trying to sound like a salesman? Well, first of all, you know, uh, I would definitely say, you know, you know, I was telling people, hey, you know, what's your lifestyle? You know what I mean? Are you are are you the sole earner in your family? Uh, and, you know, uh, I would see what type of lifestyle that they have before I would suggest them to do this. Because I would tell anybody that has a family and they're, they're the sole proprietor and income of, of that household, I would tell them, you know, I would tell them not even to get into trucking uh, <laughs> because of the way things are going. Um, but if it's somebody that came out, you know, they don't have, you know, much to lose. Uh, I, I would definitely just be like, look, man, you know, you know, you got out of jail, you know, you come from that lifestyle, you know what it is. You know, when you get a, you, you have that much money in your pocket, you know, that's not all yours. You know, you got to put it back into it. Anybody that starts a business, you know that you may make money, but majority of that money has to go back into it. And you need to learn how to live off of what it is that you get at the end of that. And that's what I would tell somebody. I, w I wouldn't try to sell. I'll tell them straight up. If, if, if you thinking about, you know, partying every week, uh, if you're thinking about impressing your friends and, and, and girls, um, if you're a person that, you know, can't be away from your family and your kids. Hold on. What's going on, guys? I just want to stop the video right here right quick. If you guys made it this far into the video and you guys like what you're hearing, go ahead and hit that like button for me, bro. Hit that like button. It's free. It's free. If you made it this far into the video, man, make sure you hit that like button. It's right up under the video, man. And if you guys like more content like this, consider, okay? Y'all got two options. Well, one, but two options. You can either subscribe for the channel for more. And if you really want to rock with me and get the videos early, make sure you join join the channel all right shout outs to all my members of the channel that rocks with your man thank you very much now let's get back to the show you know say for a time or if you guys your finances isn't isn't good to take a, a loss for a few months until you get things rolling um, then i would tell people not to come here you know what i mean but i say if you're a hard worker and you're willing to run hard and we all know what run hard means but you know you you have to do it and everybody's doing it you know, it's not just super equal. There's owner operators out here that are doing it. You know, um, but I would, I would just tell them, look, man, if you're a hustler and you and you really want to be a businessman, understand what it takes to to uh, build a business from from the bottom up. You know, understand that before you make this choice. I don't tell nobody, yeah, well, come over here, yeah, man. You know, I'm doing, I'm doing great. Now nah, I'm not gonna tell nobody. I tell people to expect to we always. You know, expect there to be a problem. You know, uh, there's ups and downs to everything in life, and you need to come into this position with that mentality. Because if you come in here thinking everything is going to be great, you're going to get frustrated, and you're going to quit, and you're going to give up. You know, because I I see I see something that that could because I'm like, wow, you know, I made a thousand dollars my first week. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, I made a thousand dollars. Most of them be like, oh, I'm in the negative. You know, I I didn't think I was going to make that much, but a lot of people say they don't see a con a, a comma in their check until after the first week. My first week, I'm gonna see a comma. My second week. I'm going to see a comma because I, I did my job. I wasn't turning everything down. So I will always tell them, like, you know what I mean? You got the money that's coming out. And then you got to live within the means of what you get, brother. You make $4,000 a month. You're doing a lot better than other people. And you got to look at it like that. It's like you said yourself, that all that $4,000 is not yours, even after everything no, is taken is. out. Well, no, no. What I'm, say no, what I'm saying oh. is that everything is taken out, you still got four thousand dollars to take home but don't forget you still got to pay sam you still got to pay your your health life insurance if you got that if for some for some of you guys got child support so y'all got that y'all got that monster child support bro yeah. See, some of them just be looking my, ugly after after child support be hitting them Hey, hey. Yo, you right. But listen, man, I'm a different type of breed, man. I, I and I'm not, I'm not boasting about stuff up. But you know, I, I, I'm on child support. I got a meeting tomorrow. I got, phone, I got phone conference tomorrow. But you, like I said, that gift of gap. You know, what I mean, putting yourself in a situation where where it works your advantage. You know, um, you see, you gotta put the effort in to make sure to make it happen. Uh, and Uncle Sam, you know, there's ways ways around that. You know, what I mean, um, you gotta understand everybody in this in the United States, uh corporate from the small guy to the biggest guy is taking advantage of 
of, of, of having an LLC. You know what I mean? And and I, I feel like you should come in knowing that you are going to take the, you know what I mean? Take advantage of the opportunities that's there. You know, I educate myself on, on, a, on a lot of things. I've watched a lot of videos about businessmen, you know, the good and the bad, to understand what it takes to be successful in it. And I already know this first year, maybe even the second year, it's going to be a struggle. But me and my peoples are willing to go through that, you know what I'm saying? Because I believe that I can do it. They believe that I can do it. So it's just a, it, it's hard that people give up, you know? If, you, if you're going to be a business person, just, you know, and you're a type of person that gives up, you know, don't try to do a business because it's hard. It, it, it's hard in the beginning. You lose in your first year of any business you start. So, and, and a lot of people don't understand it because they don't educate themselves on being an entrepreneur first. They just jump into everything because they hear about the money. And a lot of the peop- those people that say they make all that good money, they be, they be lying to cap themselves up. Because I've seen it for firsthand or own operator. It might just been him. It might have just been him. But I, I sat there and listened to him talk to his, some of his friends. You know, they were struggling. They were, you know what I mean, lending each other money, you know, back and forth. One one week he'd ask for some money. The next week his boy would ask for some money. And I seen the struggle that came with them starting out. So, you know, you got to have that mentality when you're starting a business. And, you know, I think that's what messes a lot of people up, you know, uh, and they sabotage themselves and, and what, what the real goal is. Well, there you have it, everybody. There you have it, my man, Charles. Yeah. Making it happen over at the Controversial Super Eagle. Charles, man, I I wish you luck from the bottom of my heart, bro. I hope every, I I hope everything goes the way you want. And I I hope not to see you. I I hope to see you continuing your (laughs) success. But I'm here. I'm here. I'm always going to share people's stories, whether it's it's good or bad. So just keep up with me, man. Let me know what's going on. And uh, and much success to you, bro. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. And and you know what, man? I think it's great what you're doing. And, uh, you know, I love the show. I watch it. You know, I sit back sometimes and, you know, I laugh. But then sometimes I'm like, oh, man. But, um. Yeah, man, I definitely will uh, get back at you. I'm, I'm going to give it a little, I'm going to give it the three months that they say, you know, after three months, and then I'm going to get back at you. That's you know, true. Shoot you a message and let you know how it's going. That'll work. That'll work. Well, everybody, that's it for this episode. I really appreciate you guys listening. If you guys have any stories or experience, or if you'd like to share your experience, not just with controversial company, Super Eagle, any other company for that matter, you can reach out to us by the Gmail. That's Lockout Man Podcast Guest at gmail.com. Or you can hit me up on the DM and the Instagram that is at lockout men until next time everybody if it wasn't for us nasty old truck drivers out here on the road you wouldn't have none of y'all shit this video was brought to you by a truck and a truck driver